Welcome, crew. Good morning. I hope you're doing well this beautiful Saturday. Well, morning here as it stands for a few, for a few more minutes. We find ourselves at uh, 12,500 feet over Tennessee. I just finished a little bit of imagery and had a request from Acostas 3190 in the comments. And I appreciate the comment. I always do it. Thank you. And it gives me something I wouldn't have thought of doing holds. So appreciate it again. He was asking if I could do something on holds. So hopefully this will help. Let's, uh, let's do a little bit of talking and flying about uh, holding patterns, entry ins into holdings, and uh, why we might be using, why we might need to hold in the first place. So uh, let me move the camera so I can kind of draw a few things as we fly around, and we'll be back shortly. All right, folks. So I've ignored my legs, and uh, for any shadows that come across, I have limited room in the plane here, and as I fly around, I'm continually looking for traffic, but I'm gonna try to explain this a little bit. So. Why, what is a holding pattern? It's basically a racetrack pattern that air traffic control would put us in to make space. Maybe they're making space for flow control, for that would be like metering and traffic or weather or an accident on the runway. They need to make space between aircraft so that they can get people into the runway and uh, you know, just, it's all about making space. Kind of like playing sports, making space. Um, and really, it's just a racetrack pattern, similar to a traffic pattern, except the standard is right-hand turns. Why they chose right-hand turns as opposed to the left, when a, uh, we all know a landing traffic pattern is left-hand turns as standard. I don't know why they didn't keep them similar, but they didn't. So it's a right-hand pattern with one minute inbound legs. We'll get to what that means in just a second, but uh, just know that's the standard traffic pattern. They can deviate as necessary based off of what they need you to do, but that is the standard. So you would be given, uh, let's say your traffic control says hold west on the 270 degree radial off of the MKL Jackson McKellar VOR. There's a few things to know, and but I'll tell you, I'll be honest with you, the thing that confused me was this, hold west. You know, you wanted, I wanted to think that maybe that was the heading back when I was learning. But if you just kind of break it up here, obviously this one is, is pretty standard, what facility we're gonna be using. You tune it, you identify it, and you uh, figure out where you are from that facility. Now this west, this, this is gonna tell you the direction you are from that facility. Sorry, I've gotta pay attention to where I'm at as well, looking outside. So, this west is going to tell you where you all, where he wants you to hold in relation to that facility. So if this right here is that Jackson facility, he wants you to hold on the west side of it. If he says hold east, or if they say hold north, that is the direction, the side of the VOR that they want you to hold. Then they included the 270 degree radial. So if you don't know, off of a VOR, there are radials coming off. There's 360 of them coming off of a VOR facility. Think radius, half of a circle, radiating out from the center. And uh, that might help you to know that there is only one 270 degree radial off of that VOR. If I come out from the other side of the VOR, it would be the 090 degree radial. So then you just have to figure out which way am I flying on that radial. Well, he said hold west on the 270 degree radial off that VOR. So we know now that this is the 270 degree radial heading out at infinitum. And uh, we'll figure out where we are in a minute, but that means we're gonna be holding on the west side of the facility on this radial. And the thing you just kind of have to know when he's given, when they've given you the standard entry pattern is that you're gonna be driving towards the facility. You have to have some sort of fix, intersection, something as a reference to know where you are in this hold and when you turn and what your time or distance is and everything's from. In this case, it's the VOR. So if we were to try to fly a 270 degree outbound, we have no reference to know when we should start a racetrack pattern. So if you kind of think it through logically, that might help to know which direction you need to be flying. So basically, we're going to be holding flying the inbound, the inbound leg of the holding pattern 
is going to be the 270, which would put us flying a 090, the reciprocal, heading towards the facility. Then we would cross the facility, we'd make a right-hand turn, remember that's standard, 180 degrees, and we'd fly outbound on the 270 degree radial, and then we'd make another right-hand turn, fly inbound on 090, and that's our racetrack pattern. So how do we know when to make these turns? Well, this one's obvious, is because once we cross the, the facility or the intersection, the reference point, we're gonna make that right-hand turn. But once we turn 180 degrees, for the reciprocal from our inbound heading, then we're gonna fly okay, out. So the standard, I said, was a one minute inbound leg. All right, please delete it. So we're gonna have to know a little bit about winds, but right now, let's assume zero winds. So with zero winds, if this inbound leg needs, needs to be a minute, this outbound leg is probably going to be one minute. Excuse my handwriting, it's pretty sloppy. But so, once we turn 180 degrees and roll wings level, we'll start a timer for one minute. After we cross, after, we, after that one minute is up, then we'll start this right-hand turn back around to the 090 inbound to the facility. We'll be using our OBS to make sure we're flying towards the facility. And just double check something up here. Okay. So we'll be using our OBS to make sure we're flying towards it. So once we roll wings level on this inbound leg, we'll restart that timer. Now you can start a timer on the turns because 180 degree standard rate turn is how long? One minute. So everything in here in standard is a one minute turn. If you're doing standard rate turns, one minute leg. So you start the timer. Ideally, with zero winds, so you'll cross this fix one minute later, start a right-hand turn, and you'll continue this on until air traffic control says, hey, I'm ready for you to come land now. Um, and they would give you an EFC time, expect further clearance time at some point in there to know when about how long you're going to be in this hold. So that is the general principle of a holding pattern. That's quick, it's dirty, but I hope that kind of makes a little bit of sense. So let's assume here we are, out here. This is us, and we're flying in this direction, you know, going this way. And we're given this holding request. How are we going to do that? And what entry we're going to use? So now that brings in there are three different types of holding entries. There's a parallel, there's a direct, and there's a teardrop and I'm not writing the full thing. But basically, off of this, you'll have, it's, you know, there's a thumb method, there's all these different methods to figure out whether you're gonna enter a direct, or a teardrop, or a uh, parallel. But if you kind of mentally draw it, it seems to make sense, at least in my head, the way my brain works. But what they are is a direct entry, is you're gonna arrive somewhere behind the fix on the side that you want to hold on. In which case, I'd be arriving somewhere over here. Oh, that's perfect, a direct entry. So I just turn on to the radial inbound and start the first turn and go outbound. And then there I am on that first turn. Now I'm established. I'm rolling in. If we were, say, up here, how might we enter it? So here, if we're flying direct to the facility, because you have to get to the facility or the fix first, right? And then you can start referencing that holding pattern that air traffic control gave you. So if we're up here, we fly to the fix. If we go beyond the fix, that's gonna put us coming out here, in which case a uh, teardrop makes sense. So in the teardrop is basically, you fly out the 30 degrees off of that heading. And so we would just keep this heading going. So um, let's see, a 270, that'd be what? A 300 heading outbound this way. And then we just intercept this outbound and and turn inbound and you come you fly this out for one minute sorry this is dirty <laughs> i'm trying to do i'm trying to um cram a lot into a short time period but the teardrop is basically it's a 30 degree difference from this inbound leg you'll fly that outbound for one minute and make that right hand turn to intercept fly inbound and then you start your Established. We'll come in, we'll go out for a minute, make a right-hand turn, in for a minute, and so on and so forth, and it continues. Now, teardrop, let's say I were over, not, not teardrop, sorry, uh, parallel. Say we're over here, and we're flying to the facility. If we fly to the facility and keep going, now, instead of going towards 
the holding pattern side. Now we're going to, away from the holding pattern side. And this holding pattern side, they kind of protect that area, air traffic controller does, and give you protection within that side. And the kind of the, the verbiage is you don't have protection on this other side. There is, in the Terps, there is some protection that they have built in, some overlap, but that's for ATC. For, for our purposes, this is our protected side of that radial. That's where he wants us, he or she, the controller wants us. So if we're down here on this side and we fly to the fix, the facility, and keep going beyond, we'll go to the unprotected side. In this case, we're going to use what's called the parallel entry. So we'll fly to the facility. Once we cross the facility, we'll make a turn to the reciprocal. We'll go outbound on this radio. We'll turn to 270. We'll fly outbound. We'll make a turn that brings us in and then all the way back around 270 degrees and re-intercept the inbound. So what that means is we go outbound on the 270 degree radial for one minute, just like everything else. We go out for one minute and we make that turn all the way around 180 degrees coming up on 270. And, send, and here we're using a 30 degree intercept as well off of that 090. And then we'll make our entry in. So as we see the OBS needle coming in for that 270 degree radial, we will start rolling in and flying directly to the fix. Now we're not on a minute because this time we're going to be inside that minute. So we just cross the fix and then we start our establishing the hold. One minute turn, one minute outbound, one minute turn, and then boom, you should be a minute there. And we'll just continue that once again until the controller tells us otherwise. Southwest 4839 so, contact approach on one two six. I hope that makes sense. It's quick. That might have been a little convoluted, dirty. Let's see if we can't find a facility. There's a lot of them closed around around here. But see if we might can go find something where we can actually fly one, and I can show you the, the OBS, the needles, what it actually looks like. But uh, yeah, here you go. And we'll talk about wind another time, but just know the shorter the wind is, if you have a wind blowing you this way, it's going to want to push you north, right? So you're going to have to put a crab in so that this inbound, 090 inbound, is going to look on your heading indicator some degree north of that 090, and the outbound is going to look some degree, uh, sorry, I did that the wrong way, some degree south of that 090 because the wind's blowing north, as well as this outbound on the 270 is going to have a southern correction in. And just know that's crosswind correction it's just like you would in the pattern. The mix comes in, the catch comes in if the wind is blowing you here. Well, then you've got a push that's blowing you towards the facility, which means that one minute leg that you're going for, you might, um, you might have to alter the outbound so as to have the proper inbound. So the inbound, you're gonna get pushed quicker towards the facility within one minute. And on the outbound, you're going to go a shorter distance in one minute because that wind is pushing you. So this outbound leg, you might go a minute and 15 seconds, depending on the winds, make the turn, and then you, ver you verify how long that inbound leg is. If that inbound leg was too short and it was 40 seconds, well, this outbound leg, you extend it to a minute 30 now. And you just experiment as you're in the hold with what wind corrections and timing corrections Make that one bound or one minute inbound leg. So that's the quick and the dirty. Let's move on in this flight and see if we can't actually fly one. All right, folks, here we are. We're going to do the same thing, a 270 degree radial west hold, except we're going to use the Gilmore VOR as opposed to the um, McKellar. So basically, we find ourselves here, southeast of the VR, and we're flying to it. I've got 113.0 tuned and identified in both sides. Here it is in the bottom. And we're flying right to it. I don't know if you can see that here. I'm going to do my best. But we're flying to it. So I'm a little bit right, of course. I'll correct to the left a touch. And we're 10 miles from it because I went ahead and put it in the GPS for a backup. I'm going to turn breadcrumbs on, on foreflight here, right here. And it, it has what I've done earlier this morning, but we'll be able to see the, the actual track that we fly at that VOR as well. I'm going to use this down here as my counter, my, my timer, um, for the one minute legs. So we'll fly directly to GQO, and we're looking to do a hold west on the 270 degree radial with these right turns, one minute legs, just as we talked about earlier but we find ourselves down here in the southwest, southeast. So how do we intercept that? 
Well, if we fly beyond the fixed, we're going to go to the unprotected side, right? Unprotected side, we're going to parallel. So we're going to fly to the fix. We're going to make a left turn. We're going outbound for one minute, make that 270 degree left turn to re-intercept inbound on the 090 heading on the 270 degree radial. Fly over the fix, make our right turn, one minute out, one minute in, all that good stuff, and we'll see how they work out. So right now we're eight miles from the VOR, flying directly to the VOR. I think you have everything you need to see at this point. Zero, fix our heading bug, and I'm just tracking to it. So now I'm coming through the uh, to the to the south side a little bit with a you know needing to correct to the right. A uh, small correction on the heading there. This plane does not stay trimmed up anymore very well, so I really have to stay on top of it. It'll wander off mainly to the left, but uh, one way or the other. Six miles from the the VOR. And so both of these are tuned to the same thing. So since we're flying direct to it on this one, direct to it on this one, that seems to work out. What I'll do is I'll rotate this uh, number two nav to the radial. And um, we're gonna be flying it outbound on the first one, but it's going to be the inbound radial, so we want the, the inbound OBS, so we want the 090. So I'm kind of getting ahead for our inbound down the road. Just distracted with all these people talking on the on the unicoms across the way. But basically, so on this outbound down here, we would have reverse sensing as we fly outbound for one minute. So this one, I'm going to tune to 270. Once we cross the fix, 270, we're going to make that left turn and we're going to intercept it outbound. So that way we don't have reverse sensing. I'm just getting ready down here for our inbound leg and getting ahead of what what it is we're about to do. Three miles from the VOR and we're still flying towards it. You'll see that cone of confusion and um, this OBS needle moving back and forth. We'll get the two from swap and at that point we'll make that turn to 270 and I'll start my timer. Turn, time, tune, throttle, talk. That's kind of your instrument motto, uh, mantra. Tune, time, throttle. <laughs> All right, so as we get closer to it, the corrections are gonna be smaller and smaller, right? Because we're getting, now it's more vertical. So I'm not gonna make too much corrections here because we're within a, we're coming up on within a mile, but I will correct just a little bit. see it on the ground. Yep, there's the facility right down there. I don't know if you can see it. All right, so we're getting a wobble. Crossing the VOR now. This is weird doing this looking outside. I'm used to doing this on instruments or in the hood, under the hood. All right, so we're getting a full deflection. And Give it a second. We already got the from on this one. There's the from. So I'm going to turn to 270. I'm going to put it on the heading bug. 270. Roll this one to 270. We're going to try to fly that outbound here. We'll see what the winds do for us. And I'm going to start a timer with wings level. So I got the timer going here. So one minute outbound. As we get away from that facility, we should be able to start correcting for this. So right now it's saying we're on the north side. So I'm going to turn a little more from then. 270 and put a correction in because I know the winds are blowing me this way to the northwest just because of uh, been out here flying and you should know what the winds are doing anyways right so let's see if we can get this needle to come back in within that minute so we're 25 on 25 seconds on the outbound down here I have a 25 degree correction the needle is coming back in we're getting back on that outbound 270 uh, radial. Still coming in. We got 50 seconds. So it looks like we should kind of do pretty well. We were managing to get back on the radial. 
right as our one minute comes up. Clear the area here and heard anybody or see anybody out where I'm at at the moment. All right, there's one minute, there's our radio. We'll make our turn all the way back around. I'm gonna go 30 degrees, other side of 090, so 060. And I'm gonna reset the timer. You could start, a, when I did my training, I did a timer for everything. One minute turns, one minute legs, all that, just because everything's standard rate. So we're doing standard rate down here on the turn coordinator. All right, so we're coming, we just came across south. I want to keep this turn coming to 060. And again, that wind now should push us into it. So that 060 might be too much correction. And you'll just have to play around. This is where, while you're in the hold, you're going to figure out exactly what's needed. Might open up the cow flaps a little more, cool this thing. And there we are on 060, and tune this to 090. As I'm talking, I forgot to do that. So again, it's showing us we need to go here. And I know because I'm kind of cheating on the on the GPS here, I know I'm two miles from the VOR. So I'm gonna go a little more, and I'm gonna exaggerate this a little more of a correction, so I'm at uh, 035. But I'm gonna see that needle hopefully jump in on us, and then I'll, I'll correct over to that 090 heading. Pretty impromptu. Looking forward to come on in. There we go. It needle stabilizes in. Comes in. I'm going to catch it because I knew I had a pretty big correction in at this point. So I'm going to go in and leave in a little bit of correction and see what we have to work with. So we're one mile from it. There we go. Again, still no traffic around. And we're flying to it on the indicator here too. And we're within half a mile. So at this point, I, I didn't get on it in time um, to, to ride in on that inbound 090 for a little bit. So I'm just gonna wait till we get the flop to the from and we'll fix everything as we continue to go around. So now we're getting that. I'm just flying a 090 heading outbound off of it. And there's the cone of confusion. The needles are moving, boom, bounce. This one goes from, from and we start a right-hand turn. Remember, right-hand turn, right is standard. So I'm gonna roll my, my uh, heading indicator down to 270. And once we roll wings level, we'll go back to starting that timer. And again, so we had, to, we had to correct pretty hard to get to it. So on this one, I'm not gonna put any wind correction in. I'm just gonna say 270 and see where that sits us on our inbound leg. And then that's how you learn what your correction is, the time and everything. So, standard rate turn, 210 for 270, holding around to two, continually looking outside, and I've got traffic down here. Alpha 270, we'll start our timer down here and we'll go outbound for one minute. Double check the compass again. This non standard older plane, yep, we're flying 270. So, see it up there, double check. Um, and this is what we have going on. This is what we've done so far. We flew to the facility, outbound, made that parallel entry, come back in, over the facility, back around. And you can see, we can cheat with the modern day stuff. I can see that wind's pushing me north, but I'm going to let it be. And then we'll, we'll figure out how to correct with it on the inbound because let's just pretend you aren't able to see that kind of like when i was training we didn't have any of this stuff so we're 36 seconds 37 seconds on this outbound leg we'll keep flying this 270 degree heading outbound i'm very tempted to cheat to the south because i'm able to know what the winds are pushing me but i'm not going to do it hey he's going to go ahead and make 55 seconds five more seconds we'll start a turn that. When I lift up, I'll just slide over to my left and turn around and go behind it. There's a minute. We start our turn. I'm going to clear my timer. And this is already set up. Our OBS for both of these is already set up to 090. Roll our heading bug. 
to zero nine zero. And uh, turn, time, tune, throttle, talk. All things, we're turning. We're not gonna time this leg because we don't need to, uh, but you can if you want to. Turn, time, tune. We have already have it tuned up. Throttle, do we need to change the throttle or anything? I'm fine at this power setting. Turn, time, tune, throttle, talk. I don't need to tell anybody I'm doing anything just yet. And then the last one I add to that would be altitude. Do I need to do anything with altitude? In this case, no, we're holding 1,700, so. Keep it coming in, standard rate. And we see we just went through the needle, went through the OBS there. So I'm gonna go ahead, this is where you see, I'm, I was talking and not paying attention to be honest with you. So I'm gonna go back and correct for it a little quicker here. So this will work. So wings level after I make that correction and we start a time. So we'll see how long this inbound leg is. And we'll get to see what correction we need to hold this inbound leg once we get on it. So right now I've got a 15 degree correction in to get back on it and we're 16 seconds in. So there we are, and I'm gonna make, you would do everything standard rate turns or less in the suit, but I'm trying to teach you this. So let's see what holds us. Let's find out what's gonna hold us on each uh, part of this. So I'm holding a 090 and we're still getting pushed south. And we're 42 seconds in. I'm going to alter this and I'm going to make a 100 or inbound just as my reference for the next turnaround. That's coming in. 100, see what's going to see if that's what's going to hold it. So I kind of alter my heading bug to see. 58 seconds. I'm going to hold this heading. We should get the two from swap. You see what's going on here on the iPad. Again, it's a cheat. There we go. Boom, boom, from, from. One minute turn. And again, this, you just continue this process while you're in the hold without the, the, adv the advantage of having this with, you know, to see exactly what's going on. We're figuring it out with our time. We're figuring it out with our OBS selectors, our heading to figure out what the wind's doing to us, both pushing us to and away, because we hit the VOR within right at a minute. So our time laterally works out pretty good. We just need to work on our crosswind correction on our outbound leg and our inbound leg. Any questions? So I'll tell you what I'm gonna do right now is I'm actually gonna fly on back. I have a son that's about to play a baseball game and I want to get to it, but I wanted to show you that while I was out. So hopefully that helps a little bit. Holds, entries, and uh, maybe a little bit about why. If you have any questions, just let me know in the comments below as always. And again, thank you for that recommendation, that question, that was awesome. That's, that's what I need to know, what might help you and I appreciate that. So as always, like if you happen to like the video, subscribe if you haven't done so already, I would certainly appreciate it. And fly safe, enjoy your weekend, we'll see you on the next one.